Driver Studio Sessions. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Hard Driver. Welcome to the third studio tutorial. Today, I'm going to take you inside the project of my track All or Nothing. This was the first track of my uh, EP that I did in the beginning of this year. Um, I got a lot of requests of people asking me to show a project of mine. This one is made in Ableton. I switched to Ableton last year, mainly because uh, I worked with Cubase for a few years and I was like, maybe it's time to see some new stuff and try out some new uh, software. So Ableton has a lot of advantages. Uh, some stuff is better in Cubase, like I showed you in the previous ones. Uh, kicks and vocal recording and that kind of stuff. I still do that in Cubase. I think Cubase is more made for recording and arranging and that kind of stuff. Ableton Live, that's why it's called that way, is more for doing stuff live, creativity, uh, more pattern based, that kind of stuff. But you can still make really dope tracks with it. Uh, a lot of dubstep techno guys uh, work with Ableton. So I saw some tutorials, I was like, I gotta check that out. and. I must say I've been using it for a year uh, right now, I think. So uh, I don't see myself going back to Cubase for the arrangement side of things. Really like Ableton, really creative stuff in there. You will see as I go through the project stuff I did and you will be like, oh yeah, that's pretty interesting and I cannot do that with Cubase. So maybe you will also feel like switching or at least trying it out. Once again, there is not a good or a bad software. Everything has its pros and cons. Without me rambling too much, let's get into the project. I'll just start with the break. I will discuss the stuff I used and my thought process behind it. And maybe you will learn some cool new tricks. Let's get started. So the break obviously starts with the vocals and a cool pluck that I used. For me, this is a bit the character sound of the of the track. And all I did is I made a really simple sound with silent. That's the sound I made. And here we already go. The first cool thing that I like about Ableton is the built-in arpeggiator. Really cool to use. Uh, I will not go into too much detail on every plugin because I want to more like give you an overall idea of what I did in the track. But as you can see, it's just a, a a plugin that you can put like before your synth. It works on any plugin, so built in Serum, uh, Contact, Omnisphere, anything you can think of. You can just put this in front of it. It's basically a MIDI effect. And here you can see you can just set up the notes how you want it to play. Really creative. You can also play with the speed and the like a LFO, so you can do like cool re trigger stuff like you would do with uh, effect tricks or glitch, for example. So all this is doing is just playing this chord, as you can see. And it's like filtering in pretty, uh, not super special, but I think it gives a cool spooky uh, vibe. There is also a little, like a little weird uh, cymbal kind of sound. Here I used some fireplace ambience, so it's a recording of a fireplace. I just use the top end, but it gives just a little bit of ambience to the track. If I mute it, it's pretty, pretty empty with it. I'm actually curious if people, when they listen to this track, maybe the producers will hear this, but if you focus on that kind of stuff, like, oh, what's that weird rattling thing that I'm hearing in the background? But that's basically something I do a lot, even like vinyl noise is also used more in pop music and stuff. And that's where I learned this trick. Just to give it some character. Uh, here you get like a saw pad. That's just filtering in. Which is playing like the chords of the melody, but in a longer stretched way. Uh, here is the vocal by Zen. Come hide with me in the darkness When the shadows come alive 
So the funny thing behind this vocal is, as you can see, it's already bounced because I did this in Cubase. So this is just one audio part that I already processed before. Uh, first, we had this lyric in, uh, I think it's already maybe two years old. She sang it in a faster way. It was like, come hide with me in the darkness. So really, oh, that was perfect singing. Uh, she's sung it in a faster way. And I was like, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to use this because it sounds a bit like too fast and not good enough, basically. So I started stretching with it. And then I got to a new idea, like how, why don't we just tone it down, sing it in a really long, stretched way. So I basically chopped up her voice, sent it back to her. And she was like, oh, yeah, that also works. She re-recorded it. And that's how we got this vocal. Now, a, a sound I use in every track, I think, is a, a Reese bass. So, best way to describe it is more like a drum and bass kind of drum and bass kind of bass. Uh, it's it's just two uh, two or three saws detuned on a low note with some distortion that gives like this pretty badass vibe, I think. I think I used it in almost every track. There are also some screeches going on right here. Let me check. So this is just the serum, but not that special. Just the basic screech. As you can see on this screech, I only used stock plugins from Ableton, so the saturator is really good. EQ just for basic stuff, for uh, like really in depth EQing, I still use Pro-Q. That's, in my opinion, the best EQ or the most versatile. Uh, you can just do all kinds of stuff with that. I think I used almost only the stock reverb. Uh, it's a, a preset I made. Just a really good reverb. And uh, I think it's the only, ver only verb I used in this track, even on the leads, uh, which is a pretty important thing but as you can see I just used the stock reverb of Ableton took me some time to uh, set it up if you want you can take a screenshot and replicate the setting and the uh, echo is uh, the delay of Ableton also really nice has also like a lot of options you can even put reverb on the delayed signal uh, like in echo boy for example by uh, sound toys you have the diffusion setting, which makes it all a bit more smooth. And uh, I still use this um, echo in every track since since I switched to Ableton. Uh, Max Enforcer actually showed me this echo and he kind of set it up for me. And I was like, whoa, this is really good. You can put like modulation. Um, yeah, I think I don't even know all about this plugin, but it's uh, it's really, really good. Here is another screech that I already recorded. So I do a lot of these screech sessions where I'm just making sounds for about an hour and then I record all this kind of stuff. I probably can stretch this out. Yeah, as you can see. So I'm making sounds and then I just record them on the F and on the C and on the G, for example. And then um, when I'm working, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I need a sound right here. I just go to my Screech folder and then I take one of the 1200 sounds that's in there. And then I just, I use that Screech and I'm not going to bother uh, uh, like making a Screech at the spot. I sometimes do that as well. But uh, when I'm like in a creative mode, I want to work fast and I just need like, yeah, I just need a screech it's not a particular thing that i had in mind so this is more like a fill sound just a little detail and then here so this screech is actually playing the 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 top note of the chord which is kind of a, was a lucky shot i was playing and then i i hit the 
the pitch bend and then I was like, whoa, I need to like tune this uh, this screech uh, and make it follow the, I don't even know how I did this. Oh yeah, so I just draw it, drew, draw it. I just drew the pitch bend on like a minus two or something. I had to figure out which node I had to go to. Oh, minus one. So it's it's only going down one note, but that gives a, a pretty spooky uh, feeling. It's in the big in the big picture. It's just a little detail in the background, but I think it really gives that atmosphere to it. Uh, some sweeps. I always use a lot of sweeps, but mostly I use just the same. I have this hall kick that I use really simple I think I already used that in like 50 tracks and these are all sweeps that I made myself because I know there are like a trillion sweeps out there but sometimes I'm just like yeah I'll just take like two minutes make this sweep and then I end up using it for like three years I'm sure there are like a lot of those in sample packs but I was like yeah that's how I want it that's how long I want it to be uh, with that amount of reverb and I basically have this folder, which is like my own sample pack where I have all these sounds like I just have to grab them and I'm, I'm ready to go. Same as this uh, riser or like sweep. Really simple. Here is a one. And this is all like pre-made. As you can see, these are all my own risers. So these are more like screeches basically, which I turned into a riser and I think that's a good tip just to make your own, uh, like have it a bit more of your own touch to it. Like there are a lot of good uh, risers, but usually when I open one of these sweep folders, I'm like, yeah, there's way too many, way too many options. And then I'm like, uh, oh, here they put like a, a rhythm in it and I don't want that. This is the wrong BPM. I just, sometimes it's for me, it's faster to make something because I'm pretty fast with that kind of stuff. It's faster to make it than to go and search for it. Then we go into the melody. So this is basically the part where it all like starts happening. This is all pretty, uh, pretty soft and moody. Uh, one thing that I did in this track is this reversed reverb. So this is just the bounce of uh, the first note of the of the chord, uh, which I recorded, put a reverb on it, and then I like pitched it up. Uh, so it's like uh, going from minus 12 to plus something, wherever it sounded good. And this is something that I uh, really like in Ableton is you can just grab a sample and then right away do a pitch bend on it with an envelope. Uh, even with screeches and all kinds of anything you can think of that you want to edit. If you have a vocal chop and you want to do like you can just drag it, uh, draw it, I'm sorry, you can just draw it exactly how you want it uh, without having to use like a glitch or that kind of stuff. It's really like hands-on, you can just grab your sample, draw it wherever you want to have it pitching down. You can even make patterns with screeches, all that kind of stuff. I probably did that later in the track. Uh, so the lead is a lot of stuff. Let me just solo this. Uh, so let's check what I all all the stuff I did. I always separate my top lead or top leads. I put them in a group and my chords in one group. This is because I want to have a different reverb usually on the top lead and a different one on the chord lead. Usually the chord lead is a bit bigger and more in the back. So I usually use a longer verb for that. And then the top lead has like a side chain verb or Sometimes I just draw it in. So I'm, I'm a bit more flexible with that. 
I sometimes just use the same setting, but I'm just changing the length or the, the high cut on the reverb. So the top lead sounds like this. You can already hear all the pitch bending that I did, like I said in the melody tutorial. Uh, in this track, it really gives the melody a lot more feeling. Without that, it's really uh, a lot more uh, boring and uh, this way it gets a little bit more character and it sounds a bit more a bit more humanized than just a da, 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 da. that's really boring. And now it gets like a lot of swing to it. Now just quickly going over the different layers, there are actually a lot of layers, as you can see this layer alone is already consisting of four uh, sounds. Um, as you can see, it's all soft synth. I, I didn't use any uh, virus B or uh, just because I'm having a problem with the memory. So I'm a bit pissed because all my good sounds are in there. So as you can see, these are all like simple plugins that everyone has, I think. Spire, Spire, Silent, a June, which on its own sounds uh, really distorted, uh, detuned, but together, and it's just like stacking up stuff. This is more of a like a screech, another Spire. And together. So I'm not always, uh, that's also maybe a different thing that I'm doing right now in Ableton that I didn't do in Cubase is you have these instrument racks uh, where you can basically put a rack on a channel and in that rack you can put as many plugins as you want and then that MIDI of this track is like triggering all these uh, since that you put in that rack and that way I was kind of like um, Yeah, like creating this sound just by layering all kinds of little stuff in Cubase I would like really focus on one sound like I want to have as least sounds as possible just to have it more clear But this is something I'm doing a bit different lately uh, just like sculpting the sound a bit more and being a bit less stubborn, like, yeah, I want to have it perfect from uh, with like three synths maximum, for example. That's kind of how I challenged myself in the past, which totally doesn't make any sense. So now I'm a bit more like, oh, I want to add a little grain to it. Let's just add a little sound that adds that grain instead of really hammering on the creative process of uh, making a sound. So this is all going into a group, which is just... EQ'd, it has an auto filter on it, which is just uh, the simple filter, or not that simple, it's just the filter of Ableton, but it has also a lot of options that I really, really like. And then here is my uh, verb and delay rack. So I made this rack uh, with macros. So it has a reverb in it, a uh, delay, and then just a dry signal. And this is something that I made, I saved it, and I basically never, uh, never touch the settings um, I made some macros right here for the amount of the of the effect so the amount of reverb delay I set up this uh, sidechain amount so when I turn this down it, the reverb is not being sidechained when I turn it up all the way it's like being ducked completely and then I made a macro for the time or the decay of the reverb and the feedback of the delay. So that's in my mind, I'm like, yeah, that's all the stuff I want to change because the reverb is good on its own. I don't want to touch that too much if I don't have to. So this way I'm not even uh, opening up these, uh, I'm not even looking at these settings right here. Uh, I just use it like that with as least options as possible. Just I want to add more reverb or less reverb longer reverb shorter that's the kind of stuff i want to do and then here i use the utility just to probably gain some stuff towards the track 
because I use these uh, gain settings for uh, the mixing process, so I don't want to automate those. Uh, so I use just utility, and I probably also did some width uh, controls somewhere in the track, and that has all this stuff built in, and you can make it mono and all that kind of stuff. Let's continue with the chords. I said I didn't use any virus B, but I see I already recorded it. This is a virus B. Uh, layered with a nemesis. So a bit of a, like a organ kind of feeling to it. Uh, a choir. And then this is a June. So that's the whole package of the chords. And yeah, if you mute one, you're like, yeah, it's lacking something. And uh, that's a bit my way of working right now. Uh, I probably, like the next track after this was uh, Blow the Club Down. I probably just used the same uh chord stack is how i call it like the the collection of sounds and that's the thing i also really like about ableton is that you can just drag this whole collection of sounds to your user uh library and then you can just in the next track if i'm like oh, i need my chords just take the chords from all or nothing uh with cubase i was a bit doing that a bit less because you have to save the settings and i know you can use uh track archives and stuff but somehow i didn't do it that much and because this is just drag and drop, I'm uh, doing that a lot more lately and trying to work a bit smarter and a bit more uh, uh, like have everything ready to go. Another thing I used, like I said in the melody tutorial, is this choir. Again, the Omnisphere with OTT and uh, again, the same reverb. Uh, the bass. Which is doing some pitch up. Just to give it some more, uh, make it a bit more interesting. And then the sweeps is just the sweep down and the cashmere impact. There is like some stabbing going on in the, in the track. Which is uh, side chaining the leads. So this is like side-chaining everything, I think also the bass. Yeah, so I used Volume Shaper for the side-chaining, so this is just being triggered by a MIDI, I think. Yeah, so here I have a, a MIDI track, which is just like side-chaining all the stuff I wanted to side-chain, and this way it's like super tight, so whenever there is like a MIDI note, everything is being side-chained. Crash, not that important. Uh, kick is just uh, just the kick with reverb. Uh, then here we have the rap coming up, which is uh, my own voice. I'm the first one in and the last one now. I'm smiling at my rivals while I take them out. No longer moving in the shadows. I'm a show no fear. I'm going in. All or nothing. Uh, as you can see, this is already bounced. Again, I always do that in Cubase. Here is like uh, All or nothing. myself again uh, pitched up, just layered uh, underneath the vocal. And then this crowd sound is uh All or nothing. these are actually multiple people i think i asked kuhn uh deviate uh adaro some other people and they all like recorded a voice clip sent i actually also did that with heart Soul 24 7 uh where all the fans could send in their voice clip uh so that's a cool trick if you have some nice colleagues and they will help you out uh and this is just a simple <laughs> Again, I probably did this, yeah. In Ableton, just uh, <laughs> speeding up the vocal chop and then I just pitched it up. 
Uh, so that's about it regarding vocals. Uh, the melody is doing like a little crescendo thing. Uh, so it's like moving up. So it's doing like a little bridge thing, which is like a little transition to uh, build the, the feeling towards the climax. I also did this with the, with the choir. And this really gives the tension. Uh, for the for the cool part, which is the drop. So here is another little screech. Again, not that special. It's just uh, a June. Which is also really, really cool for uh, screeches. Again, my uh, trusty uh, verb and delay rack. Auto pan, EQ, and a little kickstart. So not that uh, exciting. Then we have the climax. So let me see what I did here is like snares. So just simple filter. Also, this is just uh, Ableton pitching, so that's not really that exciting. A little house kick. And then this is always, in my opinion, pretty important before the climax to have that stuff, like have that perfect. Like this is the snare that I also used in uh, Get It Started. So this is also a snare that I just made specifically for this kind of stuff. And I, I used it in a lot of tracks. And maybe now that you heard it dry, you probably, probably, you will probably uh, recognize it in some of my tracks. And also this stuff, which is also a good tip, is make a few of those cool like pre-drop things. So this is just a sweep of FX kick, uh, snare, a clap. <laughs> Reverb, like it's ready to go. I just have to drag that in. I made like four or five of those. And uh, which is like really time saving if you just have that kind of stuff ready to go. Then the leads and the drop. There is side chaining going on. So I used. So this is the volume shaper that I used for the stabbing stuff in the in the break, and this is the volume shaper that's doing the side chaining on the climax. As you can see, it's really subtle, and I'm not side chaining the whole lead. I'm just side chaining the the lower 80%, and then the top I just left untouched, so you don't really hear that side chaining that much. But it is taking out a lot of energy, making a bit more room for the punch. Uh, which is in the middle, of course, of the frequency uh, spectrum. So I'm not gonna play the kick solo because I don't want any people, you know, I trust you, but not everyone. So I don't want people sampling my kicks. So the kick is made in Cubase, I think, yeah. And then I pitched it with Nimble, uh, recorded it, did some edits. <laughs> And this is maybe a cool thing to show. I did this weird, weird trick. So I used glitch for that. And I pitched it down, I think, yep. Which gave a cool uh, feeling in the, in the drop. So uh, the kick rolls, I always just do that in Ableton. You can um, just like use this transpose thing works pretty good here you get this uh, sound that I actually added pretty late in the process 
because I felt it was like missing something. Just a square. Which is just a bit random, just playing uh, like creating some uh, little atmosphere to it. Uh, and then there is some vocal uh, going on group. Which I processed pretty ugly. And then you get the rap again. I'm the first one in and the last one now. I'm smiling at my rivals while I take them out. No longer moving it. So this is like a little in-between part that I wanted to have a little bit more... Uh, a bit more of a tension going on to go into the second drop uh, where I made this little stabbing part. As you can see, I just used a little brass uh, sample, uh, but with the vocal on top, it's pretty cool, I think. First one in and the last one now. I'm smiling at my rivals while I take them out. No longer moving in the shadows, I'm a show no fear. I'm going in. All or nothing. Then immediately you get another break, as you can see, uh, another build up. As you can see, this is not a really long uh, break. But that's really what I wanted to do with this track. I wanted to make like the... Yeah, I really keep the live... Uh, that's maybe sounds a bit strange, but really have it working for the, the the dance floor and like not make it too long and overcomplicating stuff. Just the right balance between cool track with nice details, uh, good message to it. After all, it was like the theme of my uh, EP. And that's why I was like, yeah, this all needs to stay interesting, not make stuff too long. Oh, and here you get this build up with the vocal, which I used a sampler for. Which is a really nice plugin. Also stock. So uh, our super creative plugin, you can do like all sorts of stuff with it. Uh, so I used, I'm basically automating the length of this loop and then I'm just pitching it up, auto panning it. Then immediately you already hear the screech, the screech coming up. And then the little rap. And then you get this uh, first little part, and then after eight bars, it's like switching to something totally different. Here I added another like little crunch. And like these sounds are all pretty nasty. I already recorded these. Uh, let me check. Yeah, so pretty gross. Ah, why didn't I use that? God damn it. Maybe this is the sound. Ah, yeah, so this is all a serum. Uh, which I recorded, then uh, processed again, and then I made these little weird... Which are pretty subtle in the in the total thing, but they really add this little vibe. It's a bit like a scratching uh, sound. And you have this more darker... And then this like a like an elephant kind of sound. And then there is another one that I didn't use. Okay. 
is just doing this. And then you get a little uh, little little breakdown and then it builds up into something totally different. I already bounced. Yeah, so this is a totally different kind of kick, something uh, a bit like keep it fresh and not just do the safe thing. So I just did a little in between part and then right away uh, build up again to the final part where the melody gets introduced again. <laughs> This kind of uh, something I really liked. It's just uh, the kick pitching down, but it, that way it's like you get a little pause, but it's also continuing right away. And that's the end of the track. Uh, regarding the process of this track, I think I just started with the melody. Um, I started with the vocals, uh, then I made the melody and then took some time to get this part right because I wanted to introduce like a little different part but not make it like a total... It still had to fit the whole theme of the track. Uh, and this way it kind of made sense to do this little in-between drop here. And then right away go back to the melody. And uh, I think that this was like the good uh, middle ground of uh, doing the melody again and have something different. Uh, and still make it all interesting and not too boring. So I think I covered about every sound in this track. Again, it's more about the arrangement and the process of the uh, building the track, not specifically about sounds on its own. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and that you learned some new uh, tricks. If you have any questions, drop them below the video. It's always cool to get like a little conversation going on with the, with the viewers of these videos and the, the fellow producers. Again, ideas for other tutorials, drop them also in the comments. You can also send me messages on Instagram or on the WhatsApp number. I'll put them in the screen again. Right now, we're gonna check out some more demos that I received. Send in your demos to the email address. It's on the screen right now. So this was the tutorial part, get ready for the demo drop. Hard Driver Studio Sessions. So the third demo drop, uh, once again, send in your demos to the address that's on the screen and I will pick the best ones, do my honest review, give a little bit of feedback and maybe some tips uh, so you can improve your track or maybe it's already good as is. Let's get started with the first one, Bass Shaker Into the Moonlight. Really cool vocal right here. I would add a little bit more bass. Because you hear the piano and the pluck, but the can have a little bit of more body, I think. Uh, once again, the vocal sounds really cool, really uh, original. Ooh, nice kick. At this part, I'm feeling there is a little bit much reverb going on. Which makes it a bit of a bit muddy sounding. Uh, I would reduce the, maybe just reduce the high end on the reverbs to remove some of the stuff that's floating around in the mix and make it a bit more clear sounding. Yeah, and then here I would put the vocal again, maybe instead of here. Yeah, I would just put under the moonlight 
or into the moonlight and put that here. And then this part you can transition with a like a cool delay or something. Hoping that we live long enough to say we fly, we fly. Crushing all the walls, if the what is wrong behind. Cause all we got is each other. Nice trap uh, vibe. Oh, I like the melody. Uh, I think the ending can be a little bit better. It could have a bit of a more uh, of a closing ending, I think. Maybe. So it's really ending. Uh, this note, I would maybe do the same thing as I just showed in the all or nothing track is make a little bit of a crescendo feeling with the with the with the chords so something like that or keep this and then just pitch it up maybe a, a sweep or if there's already sweep I would Put it a bit louder, like a, ch a down sweep. And I think if I hear it correctly, the chords are pretty low in octave. So I would maybe, I don't know where they are like, uh, what's all in there, but I would maybe add a higher chord or a higher octave or pitch one of them up one octave. Because it's all a bit in a low octave range, I think. Okay, I like that it's immediately back to the trap, so it's not like a, like a complete stop. Now this works, uh, but it's basically the same drop than the first one. So I would try to introduce a little different sound, maybe something that's in the background or a little arp or a little pluck or something to uh, keep it a bit more interesting for this last drop. And then here, like commercially thinking, I would put the vocal again here like how I would put all or nothing at the end. Because if people hear this at Spotify, then it's always good, in my opinion, to end with that vocal again. So that's like the last thing they will remember from your track. But all in all, a really cool track. I think overall it's a little bit much reverb, but also, again, that's personal. I would like to have a little bit less reverb, I think. Try to find a, a happy medium. Um, if you reduce the reverb, then the master could also be a little bit louder, I think. Uh, but for the rest, a really cool track. Uh, nice trappy stuff, a really cool vocal and nice kicks. On to the next one. I didn't do that on purpose. Next one in Art Frequency for Eternity. <laughs> I really like how these kicks fit together because this one is pretty weird, let's call it that, and this one is a more normal kick. But somehow they really work together. The screech is cool but maybe could be a little bit more special I think. Maybe do a little bit of a rhythm to it, like uh, something like that. 
just an idea. Here I would put a little sweep. Nice pads. And uh, I like the ad lips, like the little vocal uh, chops in the background. Could be tuned a little bit more, I think. Oh, this is cool. Triplet. Yeah, I would put definitely a little, uh, not a little, a big impact when this melody drops. Or with the kick, something like that really needs that I think. Melody has a cool feeling. And I'm but I'm missing low end in this part. So here I would maybe add a little soft house kick uh, to give a little bit of body. Very curious. Okay, so I was hoping this would be like a little fake in between part and then would continue into the melody, but it is a anti climax, which is also cool. But if it was my track, I would put a little fake drop and then drop with the melody. I think that's a lot more uh, effective in this case because the melody has a cool feeling uh, and then do that drop that crazy drop put it at the ending because this is probably now the melody drop yeah i would definitely switch that up do like a little fake part here and then go to this uh melody drop that will make it uh uh i think more effective in this case This is pretty a party melody, and then I think this is a bit like uh, Yeah, this works, but I think I would personally switch it up. Besides that, I really like uh, how this all sounds. Really nice kicks, uh, creative stuff. Maybe because uh, I heard this vocal here. Which I didn't hear before, so I would maybe also introduce that somewhere in the beginning to glue this all a bit together because I didn't really get the the reference to the the singing part but besides that cool track uh, have a look at this that's my opinion I don't say it's the the best but that's what I would do uh, on to the third track and final one of this episode final day all of us extended let's check it out all of us. Greatness. It's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. You can forget that. This is not some rare DNA strand. It's not Pretty some uh, deep thing. vocals. We're all capable of it. All of us.
Now, first of all, this part, I, uh, I like this, but I would make the vocal a bit more clear. And the rest of us can only stand by and watch. Uh, so that's basically an EQing thing and maybe... What I would do is put a little uh, bit crusher on the vocal. Because I have a feeling this uh, was not that high quality sounding vocal. Uh, so I think that's a good way to... Uh, like, Because you're adding a little grain to it which makes it more clear. And then I would remove some of the low end out of the vocal. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. And this is all really dreamy, but I would maybe already add some more drums to it and maybe some brass to give it more um, more body. You can forget that. All of us. And here is like, a, there is an impact, but with a lot of reverb. So I would put something more, more like a hall kick or something or a kick with reverb. So it really has a big impact. All of us. And then maybe also here like a brass, like a burn, so give it more, more body. Greatness. It's just something we made up. We're all capable of it. All of us. Really cool kick. I like the melody, I like the kick, and I like how this all sounds together. Now I'm really curious how this next drop will go. Some people tell themselves. Cool. So this is exactly what I meant in the previous two tracks, is like a little switch in the melody. This is already enough. Uh, just to keep it interesting. I like that hi-hat, that's something I never did, so cool. Nice uh, square uh, sound. Yeah, cool track. Uh, I like what I hear. Uh, maybe again, the re the reverb is like uh, the most thing that people do a little bit too much of, I think. Uh, so I would have a look at that, maybe reduce it just a little bit and that way the mix will sound a lot more clear. This is also one of the difficult things. Uh, so uh, yeah, I would definitely have another look at that. All of us. But it's, it's a catchy melody and a cool feeling. It's also pretty cool because it's a high note of a kick and it still has a lot of energy. So uh, good job, final day. Um, cool tracks, some little pointers that I had. Maybe you can have a look at it. Uh, maybe it will improve the track. Uh, my name is Hard Driver. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hard Driver Studio Sessions.